sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the good news of Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The good news of our salvation. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so, my sisters and brothers, be who you are, be who you are, and be that well. The same God who cares for you today will care for you tomorrow and the day after that. Be at peace and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginings. And what is most important, be who you are and be that well. Those words come from St. Francis de Sales, uh, written a long time ago, but still very relevant for us today. So what is the context for us today? And it's pretty amazing to me that the first two readings, these ancient texts, really uh, identify uh, the context that we're living in right now. And so in the first reading, we see that when Paul and Barnabas go to the Jewish community, that they're rejected. And they then go to the Gentiles to bring the gospel message. So there is a tension in the early community in terms of how people saw things. And the tension got pretty intense uh, when in fact, you know, those first Christians, those first Jews who became Christian, those who rejected, there was a lot of fighting that was going on. And so we live in a church, in a community, in our own day, that is very much divided, uh, very divided. Uh, we live in a church where, you know, there were those this is not to take one side or the other, but those who are, you know, follow the way of the Second Vatican Council, those who don't, those who like Pope Francis, those who don't like him. Uh, and currently we're dealing with the abortion debates that are going on. It's pretty messy, isn't it, within the church? Now, beyond the church, we see in the second reading from John of Patmos, different than the John who wrote the gospel, Patmos, of course, is an island in Greece, and it's a cave on top of the mountain where John of Patmos wrote the book of Revelation. Now, what's eerie is that he talks about, in that second reading, he talks about living through a time of, a, a time, a, a time of trepidation, uh, a time of anxiety, a time in which everything seems to be falling apart. And he writes about natural disasters as well that are taking place in this end time. And so in this moment that we're living, natural disasters. Uh, we look, for example, uh, to uh, COVID. We're still living with the reality of COVID. COVID is a natural disaster, is it not? You can talk about global warming and there are many natural disasters that are going on in the world around us. And we also see that John of Pablos talks about wars and insurrections as we stand here at this very moment and continue to live with the pain of the war in, in the Ukraine. And so this is the context that we're living in. This is the world that we have, in which we find ourselves in this moment. So what does it mean in this context? Be who you are and be that well. Be who you are and be that well. Jesus in the gospel text says, I am the good shepherd. And he says, my sheep hear me and I hear them. And we need to listen. Let me say it in another way. We need to listen to the way in which Jesus the shepherd is talking to me the way in which he's talking to you. In other words, we're not just talking about his voice. Jesus is saying, I hear their voice. So what I'm proposing here 
is that we, each of us, that we find our voice. What is our voice in the midst of the wild times in which we're living? And so we have what I like to call an inherited language of religious traditions. And so often we can just mouth off these things that we were taught, say from the time that we were little children, and these are not bad things, they're good things, but so often we mouth them off unreflectively. The real issue here is this, that Jesus is our shepherd, and if I'm listening to his voice, and if he's giving me a voice, what is my relationship with Jesus? How do I understand Jesus? What does he mean in my life? And what difference does Jesus make for me? And as I experience Jesus in that way, well then I find my voice and I bring my voice into the context of the world in which we're living. There's a, a, a beautiful little book by an Indian Jesuit who teaches at the Gregorian in Rome, uh, Father Herbert Alfonso. And the title of the book is Finding Your Personal Vocation. And very briefly, what he's saying in effect, God made you. He made only one you. And each of us needs to get in touch with what touches us, what moves us. And he gives the example in his book of a Jesuit who said, I couldn't pray for 10 years. And Herbert Alfonso said, well, tell me, what is it that moves you when you pray? And he says, well, what moves me, what touches my heart, is when I read anything about the love of God. I'm touched by that. So Herbert said to him, stay with that, because that's how God is touching you. Each of us is touched in a different way, because the shepherd is speaking to us, and what's most important is that we be who we are, and we be that extraordinarily well. If we do that, that is what we are called to do and to be in the world today, and this is what the world needs, is for you to be you. I have mentioned once before that I have an app on my phone, and it's called Time Left. I'm not proposing that you get this app, but it's a sobering thing. So I get little updates each day <laughs> of how much time I have left. It gives the years, months, weeks, days, minutes, and so on and so forth. It's a little sobering thing to get this thing. Now, quite honestly, uh, not that I am uh, you know, looking to die in this moment, it isn't so much um, that I'm afraid of dying, but I am afraid of what God is going to ask me. He's not gonna ask me, uh, you know, Anthony, were you Dorothy Day? Uh, were you Mother Teresa? Were you Thomas Merton? Were you Daniel Berrigan? Were you Francis of Assisi? No. He's going to ask me one question. I created you to be Anthony Ciara. Did you become what I created you to be? And friends, that is what we have to offer the world, what God has created us to be. And that is where we're challenged to find our voice and we bring our voice, however it is that God has created us, into the complexity of our world. And at the end of the day, what matters the most is be who you are, be who you are, and be that well.